The U.S. Air Force has officially revealed an important plan for Starship related to the Earth-to-Earth -Earth transportation concept, marking the beginning of a new era for SpaceX rockets. What are the specific details of this plan, and how will SpaceX need to prepare for it? Then, we'll discuss the record that Rocket Lab just broke with the Electron rocket. Let's find out more on today's episode of Great SpaceX. The vision of a fleet of starships flying around the Earth has been discussed for a long time. Starship, a space rocket, is set to be transformed into a vehicle akin to commercial aircraft, enabling organizations to transport cargo and even people to any location on the planet in a remarkably short time. Strangely, since its introduction, this plan has seen little progress. But now, just when no one expected it, the plan is back, and it's becoming more realistic than ever. On March 3rd, the U.S. Air Force posted a notice in the Federal Register announcing its intention to build two landing pads for Starship. These landing sites are planned for Johnston Island, a remote, unincorporated U.S. territory in the Central Pacific Ocean, about 700 nautical miles from Hawaii. The island is part of the Johnston Atoll National Wildlife Refuge within the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. Johnston Island's location is ideal as an intermediate stop for routes between major continents such as the Americas, Asia, and Australia, as well as for missions to harsh regions like the Arctic and Antarctic. Establishing a high-speed transport hub in this strategic location would enable rapid deployment capabilities worldwide. Since the island is part of a protected wildlife refuge, the Pentagon must first conduct an environmental impact study. A more detailed roadmap will be announced in early April, followed by a month-long period for public comments. If the plan receives support and approval, construction could begin as early as May. Given the expected timeline for building and testing, the system might be operational by early next year. And with Starship's capabilities, there is good reason to believe the plan will be approved. This initiative is part of the Rocket Cargo Vanguard program, which aims to deliver cargo and possibly humans to any location on Earth in 90 minutes or less. According to the USAF document, the program is spearheaded by the Air Force Research Laboratory to support the development of commercial rocket technologies and test their ability to deliver up to 100 tons of cargo per mission within tactical timelines. The construction of two landing pads with potential for more in the future highlights the USAF's and SpaceX's goal of achieving high launch frequencies and seamless point-to-point -point transport. No other vehicle is better suited for this mission than Starship. With its unmatched payload capacity and thrust, Starship will launch as it does for space missions, reach orbit, re-enter the atmosphere, and land at designated locations. This capability will significantly enhance U.S. military operations and international humanitarian efforts. It could enable rapid response missions for global security, disaster relief, and emergency evacuations. Whether responding to conflicts, natural disasters like hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions, or providing medical aid, this system could be a game changer. Alongside military applications, organizations such as medical teams, charities, and relief agencies would also benefit immensely. Beyond Earth, this initiative serves another critical purpose, helping SpaceX refine Starship's operational capabilities for future Moon and Mars missions. The repeated launches and landings will provide invaluable data to improve reusability and efficiency, essential for missions like Artemis 3 in 2027 and Musk's long-term vision of sending crewed missions to Mars within the next decade. So, do you support this ambitious plan by the U.S. Air Force and SpaceX? Let me know with a yes or a no in the comments section down below. Then, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's journey to the future. SpaceX has many challenges and questions to address as it moves forward with the Starship Earth-to-Earth -Earth plan. One of the biggest questions is whether Starship's design will change and whether landing pads will require towers with robotic arms to catch the rocket. Currently, Starship does not have landing legs, meaning it would need a catching system like Mechazilla. However, if the landing pads are simply flat zones like Falconized landing zones, then Starship stages will require landing legs. Many, including myself, believe that landing legs are necessary for future Moon and Mars missions, where dedicated landing infrastructure is not yet readily available. Because of this, SpaceX will soon have to make an official choice. The decision will influence the 
construction logistics once the plan is approved. Perhaps we will get some answers in the Pentagon's report in early April. Before that, let's hear your predictions. Will SpaceX choose landing legs or tower catches? Let me know your thoughts down below. Beyond the design decision, SpaceX also needs to ramp up Starship launches. So far, the company has achieved major milestones, including landing Super Heavy with Mechazilla, landing Starship in the ocean, successfully reigniting an engine in space, and maintaining a steady launch cadence with two consecutive months of flight. However, aside from landing Super Heavy, these accomplishments have not been fully demonstrated with the newer Starship V2 model. As a result, SpaceX must secure these successes in upcoming flights to stabilize Starship operations. Several key tasks in SpaceX's flight campaign are closely tied to the USAF's Earth-to-Earth -Earth plan. For example, SpaceX needs to demonstrate reliable payload deployment. Successfully deploying payloads in orbit will prove Starship's capability to deliver cargo during high-speed Earth-to-Earth missions. While SpaceX aimed to do this in Flight 7 and 8, it has yet to be implemented. Flight 9 will be the next opportunity to showcase this ability. Additionally, SpaceX must perfect in-space engine relight. In the Earth-to-Earth -Earth plan, Starship will reach orbit and use its engines to adjust trajectory toward its destination. The power, precision, and stability of this maneuver will be crucial for successful point-to-point -point transportation. Demonstrating this capability in upcoming flights will be a significant milestone. Reentry is another critical challenge. SpaceX must prove that Starship's V2 upgrades, including improved flaps and heat shields, can handle extreme conditions upon reentry. Since this process will be directly applicable to Earth-to-Earth -to -Earth operations, successful reentry tests must happen soon. Finally, SpaceX must perfect landing Starship with the Megazilla Catch system. While this may not happen on Flight 9, future test flights will likely attempt this maneuver. Mastering this technique will be essential if SpaceX decides to implement a tower catching system for the landing pads. Additionally, it will be a major step toward achieving full reusability, one of SpaceX's key advantages over competitors. In parallel with these technical milestones, SpaceX must also accelerate its launch cadence. If the company maintains a pace of one launch per month, it'll complete about 10 more Starship missions before the Johnston Island system becomes operational. However, Musk has hinted that with the upcoming V3 variant, launch frequency could increase to once per week. This rapid iteration and testing will be essential in refining Starship's capabilities. Recently, Musk provided a surprising and important update on this new version, stating, We are honing in on the V3 Starship design. SpaceX is tracking to a Starship launch rate of once a week in around 12 months. Yes, even though SpaceX has only launched two V2 flights and hasn't yet produced many V2 prototypes, the company is already deep into research and production of V3. This move is crucial because V3 isn't just an incremental improvement, it's set to bring game-changing advancements to the entire Starship system. Once operational, Starship V3 is expected to revolutionize launch frequency. As Musk stated, SpaceX is tracking to a Starship launch rate of once a week in around 12 months. Yes, SpaceX is aiming for a once per week launch cadence, an absolutely mind-blowing pace. To put that into context, Falcon 9, the most frequently launched rocket in the world, currently averages a launch every three to four days. If Starship V3 achieves its target, it'll reach an annual launch count of approximately 48 flights per year, making it one of the most active rocket systems ever developed. Over the past year, SpaceX has made significant progress in increasing Starship's launch frequency why, in 2024, the company successfully launched two Starship flights in back-to-back -back months, marking a remarkable improvement over its previous timeline. By 2025, the time between Flight 7 and 8 had been reduced to just 49 days, demonstrating a substantial acceleration. If this trend continues, achieving a weekly Starship launch rate by 2026 is well within reach. There's a lot of work ahead for SpaceX, but the future of Starship is closer than ever. With each successful test, the vision of a fully reusable high-speed transportation system becomes more tangible. Are you ready for this breakthrough? Finally, let's talk about Rocket Lab's latest impressive record. 
On March 26th, at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, Rocket Lab launched an electron rocket carrying eight wildfire detection satellites into sun-synchronous orbit with a 97-degree inclination and an altitude of 340 miles or 550 kilometers. These payloads, manufactured by the German company Aurora Tech, are part of a mission aptly named Finding Hot Wildfires Near You. As the name suggests, these satellites are designed to detect and warn about wildfires. With wildfires becoming more frequent due to climate change, such as the devastating California wildfire earlier this year, the system will play a crucial role in early detection and prevention. The timing of the launch ensures that these satellites could be operational before peak wildfire season begins. More importantly, this mission marks a major milestone for Rocket Lab. It was their third electron launch in March, following two previous missions just 11 and a half and 8 and a half days earlier. Incredibly, all three launches took place within less than two weeks, something Rocket Lab has never achieved before. While this kind of rapid cadence is common for SpaceX's Falcon 9, it is an extraordinary feat for any other company in the industry. Overall, this was Rocket Lab's fifth mission of the year and the 63rd Electron launch to date. After a slow start in January with no flights, the company is now pushing hard to break records and reaffirm its position as one of the most active players in the space industry. Let's see what new milestones Rocket Lab will achieve next. This has been Kevin with Rate SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.